Right, um, in my last video I showed you how I changed the spindle and bearing set on my Myford ML7 and I've um, tested the lathe out over the week and um, in the end I wasn't happy with the results I was getting a lot of vibration on the spindle and chatter on the work and also I had a 5 thou run on the work and um, the oil was also just going straight through very quickly which um, gave the indication that the bearings were much more worn than I first thought. So in the end I bought a brand new spindle and bearing set um, directly from Myford UK and um, fitted that one. Now it was exactly the same fitting and assembly process that I showed in the last video um, but obviously I didn't have to make any adjustments to the actual bearings and they're so well machined and matched to the spindle that you don't even need to scrape them. Now with the new spindle the only other thing I got um, for it was the um, actual proper Myford um, laminated shims to go under the bearing housing caps and these shims are um, pressed fit together and you can actually peel um, two thou off at a time to get the adjustment correct on the bearing. The only problem I found when fitting the uh, spindle and bearings was that the actual laminated shims that I got from Myford weren't enough um, to stop the spindle from locking when I screwed the housing caps down. So um, I had to add some more um, shim that I cut. Um, at first I put about 8 thou or more in there, um, run the lathe for a little while and um, there was some movement in it and eventually I got it down to 4 thou above the laminated shims and um, that is the actual correct um, tightness for the spindle on my lathe. Now I've heard of stories um, where people have bought a new spindle um, they've over tightened it and actually seized the assembly up so I'm doing everything I can to avoid that and with phosphor bronze bearings um, they're much more prone to doing damage to the actual spindle and scoring up than the old um, white metal type so um, you've got to be very careful that you get the actual adjustment um, correctly on these housings and um, I've um, made this uh, assembly up here with a couple of um, low cost uh, thermometers which I got off eBay, you can get two for around £6 post free and they're mounted on the block of wood there with um, some cable zip ties and on the back of the wood I've um, put a couple of rare earth magnets um, you can buy those on eBay as well with a hole through the centre and screw those on with um, self tapping screws and they go on the front of the lathe um, there and the probe I put through another rare earth magnet with a hole in and that can just sit in the top of the um, bearing housing and you can actually push the magnet over so that the probe makes good contact with the um, housing and give um, a fairly good idea of how warm the bearings are getting. Now on my lathe I've um, changed my motor pulley for a larger one than the standard one and seven eighths inch. I've changed it to two and a half inch and that gives me um, greater speeds. Uh, instead of the standard 640 RPM on the top speed I have about 850 and this is perfectly acceptable and is mentioned in the actual Myford ML7 um, handbook. So as I know the actual spindle speeds of my lathe I use my mandrel for my handle on the back and I've stuck black tape all the way round and left a gap and that is so that I can use a digital tachometer on the back there and test the spindle speed um, obviously when I'm setting the lathe up and testing it for the first time 
um, you can quite um, often check the uh, spindle speed to see if there's any slowing um, which could indicate that there's a problem so I start the lathe up and just test it on the back there Um, and that's 849 RPM which is correct for my lathe actually I think the um, tachometer is such a good idea and a good indicator for the spindle um, that I'll get one a small one that I can actually permanently um, leave on the lathe I've seen them on eBay um, little battery device ones and um, they look like they just um, fit on with a magnetic mount and I think that would be a really good um, thing to have on the ML7 also another thing I do to keep everything running smooth is to um, put a shot of molly slip in the front um, cups, oil cups and I do this um, at the beginning of every machining session so I'm going to give the um, machine another test. Um, I've got this piece of um, mild steel with quite a bit of overhang and um, I'm going to do a 40 thou cut. Incidentally, um, I've taken the guards off the machine um, just for this video. I wouldn't normally run the machine without the guards. And I'm using a carbide tip and um, feed. And that's it so I'm um, very pleased with the results I wouldn't have been able to do that with any of those other spindles I've tried so I'm very pleased with this new spindle from my third so if you have problems with um, your spindle and bearings on the my ML7 I wouldn't recommend actually buying a second hand set um, I think it's a waste of time because most of them are badly worn out unless you know of a lathe that they came off of and it's in good condition um, it's actually worth buying a brand new set um, from Myford and I have read on the internet um, where people have had these uh, ML7s from new and they've always used the correct oil and um, maintained the lathe very well and the spindle and bearings has lasted for uh, um, over 50 years um, with no problems and is virtually as good as new so um, having this new spindle and bearings um, is absolutely uh, really great on this lathe this is the lathe fully refurbished now and um, is, is actually like having a new lathe.